Yes, I have made the switch to DaVinci Resolve. Was it difficult to switch? Yes, very. And no. I'll explain. I was a diehard Vegas user forever. I loved the interface and how quick and easy it was, but after wasting over a year dealing with constant crashing in Vegas, I committed to switching. I had been using Vegas since before Movie Studio 13. I was running Vegas 17 with constant crashing, upgraded to Vegas 18 and it was still crashing constantly. I tried a trial version of Vegas 19 and it crashed just as much as the previous version. The last video I made using Vegas 18 was so incredibly painful I would have to save after every change, constantly hit control alt delete after every freeze, literally every couple minutes. I had dabbled in DaVinci during that time, but I would quickly get stuck and then give up and go back to using Vegas. But after I had written five or six customer support tickets to Magic, they would take a long time to respond and the advice was very generic. Also during that time, I replaced most of the hardware in my PC, thinking it was some piece of hardware that Vegas didn't like. I replaced my CPU, motherboard, memory, video card, added a second SSD, several clean installs of Windows 10, ran stress tests, memory tests, spent countless hours trying all the settings in Vegas, including the internal settings accessed by holding the shift key. I even made a spreadsheet of the settings trying to methodically test each setting and record if it helped or not. I watched every video I could find on how to fix the crashing in Vegas red forums. Nothing worked and I had finally had enough. I flipped the switch and I was officially done with Vegas. This was the trick to force myself to learn DaVinci Resolve. Once I was committed in my mind, I learned to do basic edits in DaVinci fairly quickly. There are quite a few traps in DaVinci that will run you into a brick wall. But here's a quick comparison and some traps that I fell into, so hopefully you don't have to. Disclaimer, I'm just starting to get comfortable with DaVinci Resolve, so I'm probably showing you not the best way to do stuff. Two YouTube channels I recommend you check out. The first one is Casey Ferris. This guy has really good tutorials. And the other one is this Learn Color Grading. This is a... Uh, pretty amazing what this guy can do with the color grading. So this is advanced stuff, but it'll give you a good idea of just how powerful this program can be. So importing media into Vegas is super easy. Just import media, pick your folders. Super easy. Once you have it in there, you can just open in the trimmer. You can find the spot that you like. Highlight a little bit of it. Drag it down and then you can even, this is, I like this feature, you can set your cursor and then you can just drag that down. I mean, you can really throw some stuff down into your timeline super fast. I mean, you can just, so that's Vegas. So here's DaVinci Resolve and it's quite a bit different than Vegas. So down here at the bottom, this is kind of the progression that you're supposed to go through as you create your video. So this is the media, this is the, the uh, cut. And I don't use this tab, but you're supposed to just quickly grab the parts you want in here. But I find it's not zoomable and I just don't really like this. So I just go over to the edit. I believe that's what this is called, right? Edit, yeah. And then let's say, it, and DaVinci doesn't have a trimmer like Vegas, at least not one I can find. Um, but if you double click on one of your video files and then you can kind of view it through here and then you just have to use the uh, in and then the out and then you can drag it down. So that's one way uh, that DaVinci and Vegas are quite a bit different. Um, you get used to it though. And then uh, further on, just to complete this, this is the fusion and you can do crazy effects with this. And then you have uh, the color uh, color editing, color correction. This is again, crazy powerful. And then you have the fair light, which is, this is how you uh, tweak all your audio settings. And then once you're done with all that, once you've gone through the steps, you, you render your video out. So that's kind of cool. So here's some major workflow differences. Um, so let's say you have this video file here and you want to get more from that clip. So you can right click, open and trimmer. 
and then it'll open up right where you are on the timeline. And then you can use your mouse wheel to zoom out of the trimmer and grab a different section over here. You could zoom way out and go all the way over here and just drag it down. So that's how it works in Vegas and I got really used to it and I really liked it. So DaVinci was a bit of a learning curve. So if I go to my timeline here and I go to the same clip, let's find that clip at, here it is. And so in DaVinci you can have just your timeline window or you can have uh, this is, I guess, DaVinci's trimmer, their version of their trimmer. And so you can go right click and you can go find in media pool and it'll highlight which one it is. And then if you double click on it, it'll open up and then see, this is the section that's in my video. And if I double click on this one, this is the section that's down in the timeline. Double click on this one. This is the section I took. And if you wanted to get another section out of there, you'd have to hit in and then out I and O and then I could drag it down but you can't zoom right I don't know it's it's just different I'm getting used to it but I think I like the Vegas version better but I'm sure eventually I won't even care so here's a crazy trap in DaVinci Resolve if you accidentally turn off these red boxes which I did, I accidentally must have clicked on them and didn't know it, then suddenly you cannot drag any media to your timeline. You get this uh, circle with the slash through it. And I was like, what the hell did I do? Well, turned out you have to have the red boxes on at least one of your tracks. And then you can drag it right over there. That is a crazy trap. Another trap is always start out your project with the correct frame rate. I started this out with 30 frames per second and then I wanted to change it to 59.9 whatever and it's kind of a pain in the ass. So you can have different frame rates. So if you go to file project settings, see this timeline frame rate, see how it's grayed out? So if you create a new timeline, you have to uncheck this box and then you can pick let's say you wanted 30 frames per second or 24 then you can create a new timeline and then you could copy your old you could just select all this and then just control c and control v over to your new timeline but that was a pain so always start off with the correct frames per second whatever you want your timeline to be so in Vegas, it's really easy to do uh, fades. You can just grab one of these and you just drag it over and now you have this, this nice little fade, this cross dissolve. Super simple. So in DaVinci Resolve, even doing simple things like a cross dissolve took me a little bit to figure out, uh, mostly from watching videos on how to do this stuff. But there's one way you can do it is you can go to the effects and you can just kind of drag it in there and then um, if you have enough you have to have enough extra length on the beginning and end of the of the video file and then you can just make it longer so that works pretty good or you can do it manually kind of how I did on this clip so here you can just control the fade in and fade out and by just whoops, and by just manually controlling it you could do a, a kind of a dissolve fade in that way too so just a little different workflow so in Vegas you got your normal edit tool and you got some other selection tools here and um, this is your ripple and you can just if it's on it'll just move everything back if you move things forward it kind of just ripples the whole timeline down and if you extend the timeline it see it ripples it. and if you shorten it it'll ripple it um, and I kind of like it, although I will say getting your cursor perfectly on there is a little fiddly. Another thing in Vegas is this is your playhead. You can, wherever you click, the playhead appears, and then you can even click up here, and you can drag it, or you can um, use this to scrub through, which I never use. Um, so that's how Vegas works. So DaVinci Resolve, uh, the way you edit, is quite a bit different than Vegas. 
So the first thing is the playhead here, and you can only move it by clicking on the tick marks right here, or you can grab it. You can't click down here, you can't click up there. So I kind of like that because you're less likely to accidentally move it. It's a deliberate move the playhead. Um, this is, the, and the reality is you only really use these four tools right here. And so this is a razor blade for splitting your, your clips. And then you can just undo. Um, this is the dy dynamic trim tool. I don't really use that. It changes the way these things behave. So for example, if you're just on the selection mode and you drag this clip over here, so it just makes this clip eat more into this one, but it doesn't change the timeline. But if you do uh, this tool, which is the trim edit mode, now see it's moving the timeline over. And if I go this way, I'm extending it. And if I go the opposite way, it shortens it up. So you just switch between these two modes. will get you pretty much what you want. Um, the one, another thing weird is, let's say you want to move everything over. You want to create a bunch of space to put something in there. You can do an insert tool in the mark and insert it in there. Or if you click here and then you hit alt control Y, which is weird, but it selects everything past your trim head and then you can create a bunch of space and then you can throw a clip in there. So that's fiddly. Um, or you could just take, you could just highlight it all right and then drag it over. Um, and there is insert tools, but I don't know. That's kind of, I don't know that I'm used to it. I guess it's not a big deal, but c coming from Vegas, that was a little bit of a learning curve. Here's some other pros for DaVinci Resolve. I managed to follow a tutorial for the anchored text using Fusion. The image stabilization is much better in DaVinci 17 compared to Vegas 18. DaVinci just feels more responsive and faster than Vegas. DaVinci is free. But it's not all sunshine and rainbows with DaVinci. There's no full screen video out to a second monitor unless you buy the studio version. But Vegas isn't free, so that's a wash. I purchased a Blackmagic Decklink Mini Monitor 4K card when I was troubleshooting the issues with Vegas. So now I use that deck link card for a full screen preview on a second monitor. So you could do that or purchase the studio version of DaVinci. I find using keyframes in DaVinci very difficult. The spline tool is very tricky to use. I'm sure it's because I don't know what I'm doing yet, but Vegas just seemed easier. The DaVinci timeline is still really weird to me. How it decides where tracks are going to go and how all the audio tracks go on the bottom. Also how the auto track selector works. Whereas with Vegas, all the audio tracks could stay paired up with their respective video track. In DaVinci, you can click on an empty space between clips and hit either the delete key or backspace to remove it, depending if you want the clips above or below to also get deleted. It's a nice feature, but I've royally screwed up my timeline in DaVinci using that. I know I'll continue to get better with more practice, but it's a nice feeling to know that I'm not even scratching the surface of what DaVinci can do. I don't know why I had so many problems with Vegas. Does Vegas hate AMD processors? I don't know. I can't imagine other Vegas users having all the problems I had. All I know is with the same video files on the same computer, DaVinci Resolve ran stable and Vegas didn't. So if you're looking for a change or looking to grow, I can definitely recommend you give DaVinci Resolve 17 a try.